What's up everyone on the internet? Thank you for making this video a part of I'm so excited to upload this one for you guys because this video we're going back to an anime that I instantly fell in love with. A Sense of a Bookworm Season 3. But before we go any further, if you're new to the channel or if you haven't heard about Sense of a Bookworm, I highly recommend you check out my first video that came out in 2020. Links in the description down below and don't forget to hit that like button. But anyway, I had never felt so happy before when I heard that Season 3 was coming and the trailer dropped earlier this year. Because when I discovered this anime back in 2019, I was not expecting it to be this freaking adorable. Not only that, but what also made this isekai stand up from all the others is that it really emphasizes the idea of knowledge is power. Reading really does help because the more you read, the easier it is to solve problems. But like I said, season 3 came out this spring and it just wrapped up today and picks up after the events of season 2 where we have Mine getting used to life as an apprentice priestess. And one of the things that I really liked about this season is how even though we're getting all new forms of magic, at the end of the day, Mine's overall goal is to still make books. Now even though we achieved that goal by the end of season 2, the next step is to mass produce them. Which means now that we have to start focusing our attention on making a printing press. And I love how within the first few episodes of the season, we do see Mine slowly get the parts she needs in order to make a functioning printing press. At the same time, the story does remind us how, even though everything's all happy-go-lucky, everyone's having a good time making books, there is still a danger that has an overall presence throughout the entire season. And we begin to see this sort of thing play out as Mine starts to attend her duties as an apprentice priestess. Despite the fact that she was given noble stats by the end of season 1, and she pretty much proved her worth by the end of season 2, there are still nobles in this season who see her as a threat. Which ultimately leads us to the idea that was presented by the end of season 2. Because Mine is so valuable, her knowledge must be protected at all costs. And the only way to keep her safe is for her to be adopted by a noble family. And she takes the news... Somewhat okay? <laughs> okay, mine. Just, just take it easy, okay? Just chill. We can be reasonable, right? We're friends. Anyway, despite her resentment, I love how the idea of adoption resurfaces throughout the entire story as we see Mine struggle with the thought of being separated from her family. One of the things that I noticed about this season is how it pretty much uses the same format that the past two seasons used in terms of storytelling. In the first season, we watched Mine enter this new magical world while at the same time get adjusted to it, focus on making a book, and also be reminded that her baptism is coming up. For season two, we watched Mine enter the church, get adjusted to life as an apprentice priestess, focus on making her books while also being reminded that her first ceremony is coming up. Here in this season we watch Mine enter the world of nobles as she begins what I like to call her prayer tour while at the same time get acquainted with noble life, focus on making her printing press, but also be reminded that she's still in danger and adoption is her best chance of protection. And on top of that, this season also foreshadows the idea of Mine attending magic school. More on that later. But anyway, going back to the format that I mentioned, it seems that all three seasons follow this sort of pattern. Let's introduce Mine to a new world, let her roam around and get adjusted to it, let her focus on her projects while at the same time foreshadow something that will lead to a new chapter in her life. And let me tell you, watching Mine get adjusted to noble life, the journey that this character has gone through throughout these past three seasons is incredible. Because at the beginning of season 1, she was pretty much a Tiny Tim character who almost died a few times. Here she is now, flying into battle and showing us just how powerful she is. Oh my god, the magic being used, it has improved so much with each season in this franchise. Because one of the most magical moments, or should I say most frightening moments that came from season 1 is when Mine pretty much went all Darth Vader on someone and started force choking a dude who tried to hurt her family. And by the time we got to the end of season 2, that was when we got to see just how powerful Mine is when she pretty much replenished Death Valley. Here we finally get to see the magic being used in combat right in the first few episodes of this season. And from there on, the action scenes keep building up as Mine pretty much reminds everyone to not mess with her. So the idea of having a noble adopter so that she can attend a magic school just gives me goosebumps. She's already a problem as she is. Imagining her going to magic school, learning how to control her mana, learning new spells, that's like Baby Yoda being trained by Luke Skywalker. But knowing that this season foreshadows adoption, it's the final two episodes where the story just pulls out all the stops and gives us some emotional moments. And let me tell you, 
I have never felt so much hate for a single character since the rising of the shield hero because in those final two episodes my heart was set into a rhythmic where I saw the high priest pull a very unforgiving move. Without giving any spoilers I will say while my mom and I were pretty much holding our breath during those final two episodes my brother who was just casually watching not really paying attention when he saw the shenanigan the high priest pulled he was pretty much like Damn! I didn't expect him to watch this anime, but just hearing how pissed off he was, that's pretty crazy knowing that this anime was able to reach him. I even remember him telling me, okay, I'm not a super fan like you, but that episode made me sick to my stomach. Same here, bro, because watching those last two episodes, I felt a giant knot in my stomach. And without giving away any spoilers, I will say by the time the season ends, it's a bit of a tearjerker knowing where this story is now leading us because of the ramifications of what happened in the final episode and the episode prior to it. So I am very excited to see what happens next and I hope that season 4 comes sooner than later. So overall, I really enjoyed season 3 of Ascendance of a Bookworm as it keeps the same magic that was found in the first few seasons but also improves on it. With that being said, I do have some small problems I had with this season. Not even problems, more like little nitpicks and they mostly involve the subtitles changing certain terms that were established in the first few seasons. And the dub also changes these terms too. Instead of Grey Robe Retainers, they're now called Grey Robe Attendants. Instead of mine mom being called Eva with a V, she's now called Effa with an F. As for my sister Tootie, whose name was spelled T-U-U-R-I, it's now spelled T-U-U-L-I. Minor nitpicks with the subtitles, but that had no effect on the story whatsoever. So overall, I really loved this season, and I loved it so much that I'm re-watching it again in English with my sister. So if you're looking for a new anime to watch that is very magical, very cute, very wholesome, I highly recommend you jump on this series. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. That was my overall view for Season 3 of Ascendance of a Bookworm. If you like what you saw, click the subscribe button. See you guys up from this channel. I'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye-bye.